Welcome back to The Money Show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati. I am Oji Akbi. For many decades, Nigerian comedian, dramatist, and actor Moses Alaya, better known by his stage name, Babasala, entertained audiences with his comedy sketches and home videos. Widely regarded as the father of modern Nigerian comedy, Babasala, who unfortunately died on Sunday in his hometown in Ileisha, Ocean State, southwest of Nigeria, also collaborated with other renowned Nigerian dramatists such as Herbert Ogunde, Duro Ladipo, and Kola Ogumola to help popularize theater and television acting in Nigeria. With us to discuss his legacy in the performing arts is an international award-winning theater director and a professor of theater and head of directing at the Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, USA, Professor Shegun Oje Ojewi. Welcome to The Morning Show. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Thank you. Sure, good mm -hmm. to see you. It's good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are still on sabbatical in yes. Nigeria, right? Yes. Okay. Well, let's start with uh, Baba Salah, mm -hmm. Musis Olai Adejumo, uh, who died over the weekend. What will you say his legacy is in terms of his contribution yeah. to the development of the uh, cultural sector in Nigeria? It's huge. I mean, it's um, yeah. it's huge. It's a uh, it's high time our scholars started writing. Uh, some serious history books on some of these um, uh, names. Basala started as a musician. I mean, with the um, with Sonia Day, King Sonia Day, as a guitarist in his in his band. He was actually his mentor, and then he branched off from there into theater, acting on stage. You know, writing his own script, managing his company, and um, performing all over the country. And then he moved, was one of the early pioneers uh, of, uh, into, the, into the movie industry. You know, Yoruba traveling theater, migrating into movie making, which actually, you know, started this wave of independent movie production. So his legacy is huge, uh, for, for not just for Nigeria, uh, for, for, the, for the continent itself. Because if we go back to the uh, Ghanaian opera theater, the concert performers, he was also, it also took part of that. The same with Ogunde. They, you know, they, we had this group of uh, performers, managers, directors, scriptwriters, they did everything. They were not just artists, they were also businessmen and administrators. They left, you know, a structure on the ground for the young ones to follow. They, they made the art profitable, responsible, and also um, sensitive to the, to the nation's uh, development. Because their scripts, their performances, particularly Babasala, even with his comedy, uh, he was almost all, always satirical. His comedies were not just uh, you know, the loud noise you know, about mm -hmm. nonsensical stuff. He was busy, you know, speaking back to the society, informing the government on, you know, what, what's going on. Well, he had a pulse on, on, on the society. So his legacy is huge. The question, I think, should be, what's the nation's legacy mm -hmm. for these artists? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll come to that because, you know, we'll raise <coughs> questions about even what happened with Baba Salah himself, his son, Emmanuel Adejumo. Uh, in one of the interviews he granted since his father's death, said that there was nothing wrong with his father, uh, that he died as a result of old age related issues, but see. that he was destroyed by the fact that his uh, movies were pirated. Yes. Um, how much of a threat do you think uh, piracy, uh, intellectual property rights, pose within the creative industry in it's, Nigeria? It is a, it's, it is a lot. It's, 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 I mean, the first indicator we need to look at is that the United States does not take this lightly. On every movie you see, you'll see that huge sign from the FBI, you know, warning you about yeah. piracy. Mm -hmm. that, that, that should tell you that it, it, it contributes a lot to the economy of the country. Apart from the economy, this is one of the mistakes that administrators have always made when they approach arts and they are trying to understand what the arts contribute to a nation. They come to arts from the perspective of the economy. Forgetting that the value the arts bring to the societies is bigger than just making money. Mm -hmm. And so 
The issue of piracy uh, and intellectual property is not just depriving the country of, of, of economic gains, but also depriving us of, of values, of you know, actual uh, uh, production, of intellectual work. And in our country, uh, in the 80s, in the late 80s, there was a copyright uh, council that was put together. All of these things came, the NICO, National Institute for Cultural Orientation, they came with a cultural policy. It was around the same time that the national troop was flourishing. And there was a move to also establish the National Endowment for the Arts. All of these have just fizzled out because our politicians have neither cared nor you know, to understand or because it, they have not seen how they would make money into their own pockets. And so the question you ask is how, 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 how much damage has it done? It has done a lot. You see, Chief Ogunde was already, if not for the national troop, was already being hurt by you know, the issue of piracy. At, at the tail end of his career, a very, very powerful, strong career. The same thing with Onyade Jobi, who actually, you know, by the stories that we know, died a, a, a pauper. I mean, he was such a productive mm. individual. But we are touching on the theater and the, you know, the actors, the directors and things. We ha also have the same problem with musicians. And in fact, we do not have to go too far. You need to ask Tunde Kelani, you know, and, and his movies, and he will give, have you, give you stories. Mm -hmm. You just need to walk on the street and you see all of these, you know, things being sold on the street. Yeah. What is our government doing? Especially now that we are talking about change, about, you know, uh, moving the economy away from just oil, you know, why are we losing so much and ignoring it? And so, uh, let me go back to uh, Baba, Baba Salah. Salah yes. yes. Okay. You know, um, <clears throat> Baba Salah was part of this tradition in Nigerian theater, or if you like, you even included the concert opera uh, in Ghana, uh, which was the uh, main thing in the 50s, yes. early 60s, and early 70s. Now, it was part of that traveling theater tradition, mm -hmm. what our former teacher, Professor Adedeji, called the Alarang Joe. Uh, but today, that whole tradition it's seems to, to have disappeared. What do you think is responsible for that? It, it's been taken over by home video, you know, um, it, Nollywood. Live theater is almost dead. Uh, well, I've, I've heard that phrase before about not a live theater dying, I, and I've always responded that uh, life theater will never die. Are you it's, saying that because you're a director? Because you need to put plays on stage? No, 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 not really. Your territory. No, no, not really. By the nature of theater itself, it, it, it cannot die. It, 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 you know, I say it's hibernating, yeah. you know, but not dead. But what's going on, though? Well, how many things do we see now? It's basically just a terraculture thing that mm, uh, well, is the, happening right now. I will now. come to that, yeah. you know. Um, the, the thing about that is that when we are in Lagos, we only see terraculture, mm. and we see the, you know, the few things that, that make the newspaper and all of that. But across the country, theater is happening uh, everywhere in the country, okay. at different levels of practice. Theater is happening. Even in the United States, I always, I always say this to my students you know, their first week. I say, you, you, you have to be crazy to be in this class because you are bright enough, you're going to work yourself so hard, and you know how tough it is going to be for you to, to, you know, to make a living when you get out. And the, the point is that the audiences still go to the theater, in spite of home videos, in, in spite of the movies, in, in spite of concerts, they still attend theater. So there's something about the theater that makes it part of the DNA of a society, of a people. That's why it will never die. It will always have a place because we need to have this dialogue that the platform of the state provides. Um, now, the invasion of home videos is part responsible for the you know, hibernation of the traveling theater. I will not use the word dead. <laughs> <laughs> I said partly responsible, but the security in the country is another matter. 
In those days, they could get into their, on, into their trucks and drive around town and, you know, play their drums and, and market their product. And people would come to a, a street corner and, and watch their performances. As a kid, I, I, I saw performances like that. Um, but you can't do that these days. For, you know, traffic is another one. The hazards of just moving from one point to another is, is a huge one. So the country has changed not for the better. For the worse, let me, you know, let, let's be honest about that. And that has affected uh, the theater in, 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 in very grave, grave ways. Um, I can't help when I talk about theater to also talk about the country because, you know, they go hand in hand. Uh, my own evaluation of, of the country is that what, what really scares me is not the the uh, uh, damage that's happened to the infrastructure, I mean, buildings, uh, that we do not have good roads, that we do not have uh, uh, bridges and, and, and things like that. That's a problem. I'm not negating that. But the major problem I see is the people. What has happened to us as a people, you know, to our values, to our, our ethics, to how we think, and how we respond to, you know, our community. That's the problem. Well, is there awareness for theater? That, that's, the, that's the question first that you should ask. Is there any kind of awareness that you're putting in our face for us to go to, to, to watch theater? Yes, there, there is awareness for the theater. And, 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 and people, will want, people will go to the theater. Now, I have been speak, talking about um, uh, how society has not been helpful to the theater. But let me, let me flip it. Yes. You know, because your question is, is there awareness? Mm -hmm. Awareness is there for the theater. But you need to cultivate your audience. And you need to nurture and develop your audience. And the theater community has not done a good job of that. Let me be you know, open about okay. that. Because you, know, if you, you have to have a product to sell. Your product must be good consistently for people to keep coming back to your shop or to your stall to buy that product. Exactly. If it's not consistently good, and I keep using the word consistently, if it's not consistently good, then they, be, they will lose interest and they'll find other avenues of entertainment. So let, a, let, let me take you back to Baba Sala. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, uh, after he had a problem with Orumoru and he went into financial difficulties, uh, nobody came to his rescue. Nobody. In fact, at a point, uh, people were accusing Sonia Ade that Sonia Ade should have been taking care of him and all that, um, and then eventually um, he died, OK? Mm -hmm. uh, but he's not the only one. It's not just theater artists. Mm -hmm. It's not just performers. Yeah. You hear stories of former football uh, players, players, you know, yes. uh, uh, or some people in other aspects of the creative industry who, in the latter part of their lives, are just, you know, they live in penury and no help comes. What can government do to assist these people, uh, you know, so that when they get older and they are no longer active, they can be protected? Or you think it's clearly a case of personal failure? It's not. It's not a case of personal failure. Um, we live in a country. We are citizens of a country. So we owe the country uh, a certain level of you know, responsibility. And the country, in turn, also owes us. So um, these people that we are talking about, Moses Olaya and other musicians and, and, and the performer and sports people, they are individuals. Mm. But they also represent certain tracks of our, of, you know, of, of our society, meaning that we should elevate the discourse beyond the individual you know, thing and see them as representatives of certain sectors of society. So in response to your question, what do we do to take care? We should, the government should respond to the sector. That's the theater sector. And the creative industry. Yes, we have for, a Richard Mofa Damijo here, who um, we talked on, no, we touched on budget in Yeah, but what ex exactly the do you think should be done? Mm -hmm. I mean, you were part of that old argument about the endowment for the arts, mm -hmm. about getting a proper cultural policy. I'm not even sure we have reviewed the cultural policy we, or moved anywhere with the endowment for the arts. We haven't. And it's not for lack of you know, effort on the part of the artist, but, for, but on the part of our government. We have a problem with our politicians. 
I mean, you, Ruben, will, you know them better than I do. We have you a sure problem. <laughs> you were in Osho now to, to monitor the elections. <laughs> yeah, I went as a private okay, citizen. <laughs> you know, they, they have no clue, or they have just refused to, you know, have a clue, to get a clue. They, they, it, it's about amassing power and money more than really working for the people. They, you know, democracy has become something, I mean, the Nigerian brand of democracy is very problematic. Democracy is not perfect. It's not a perfect system. Uh, but our politicians, I just don't, I don't get it. That's the thing. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a therapist or, you know, a, a brain shrink. So, but that's where I think something is wrong with our politicians. And I think also that people, sane minds, who ordinarily, you know, were ethically grounded, once they, you know, got into politics, there's something there in that community that, that, that does something to people. Also, it seems like Abuja, you know, Ruben wrote something about Asa Rock and, you know, people, they are dying when they get to, or something like that. Abuja seemed to be in like an enclave to itself. Like, you know, you get there, it's about grabbing money, grabbing money. Look at, look at Lekki, look at Banana Republic. You see all of this wealth in this country, and then you see this astounding poverty. So then we need, in the last segment, we were talking about a cabinet of intelligent people that could, there are ideas that could work and make the industries work. Let me talk about the creative industry, yes. if you know. The endowment fund is not a strange idea. It's not an original idea. It's, it exists in the US. And it's not an impossible idea. It's actually so simple, so easy to, to execute. But government refuses to do that. One area where the government and the politicians continue to have problems is in law enforcement and the justice system. If you take care of those two, you will see that there's a lot that will be corrected in our society, in our nation, generally. People will, you know, things will work. Our constitution is great. We have policies on the ground, but we never enforce them and we don't make them come alive. That's the problem with national endowment. That's why they have not gone to it. Two, the National Theatre has been there for decades, mm -hmm. just wasting away. That's correct. And in the, every time a government comes and they start talking about, you know, concession with private, it's not going to work. That building is not a national, it's not a theatre. Nobody is going to go to that place to, you know, to, it's just built, it's a sports complex, let, let's face it. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not the issue. I have, you know, this thought. Look at what's happening in Nollywood, how the independent movement has really flourished. Look at what's happening in our music industry. It's flourishing. Look at what's happening in visual arts. It's also flourishing. The one that is lagging is the theater. But I say that together, if you go to the universities, you find the admission rates have gone, really gone up. In, in theater programs. Okay. Or maybe because they changed the title of our departments to theater and media arts. Yeah, well, <laughs> because if we want to, they want to act, they want to be in the, and they see that there's, you know, it's an industry now. There's money to be made. Mm -hmm. I say, let's combine these, the ideas. Let's turn the National Theater into the National University of the Arts. Very brilliant, yes. Mm -hmm. Where you have all of these housed in that building. It's already there. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be hiring professors who will sit there tight and be civil servants and not be teaching. You'll be hiring you know, on contract, you know, artists that are established from any part of the world for a certain period to come and you, the registration is assured. Mm. It's private, they'll be paying fees and it will be self-sustaining. Well, Shagun, uh, thank you very much. Maybe we'll invite you again, we'll talk about this university, yes. National University of the Arts. Yes. I think they have a similar thing in Australia, Yeah. Uh -huh. right? Yeah, yes. so uh, we can talk about it, but as you said, the problem is with our politicians. If they will listen, and if they have the capacity 
to understand well, some I of these proposals. I hope someone heard you today. <laughs> well, it was very insightful well, to have thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah, not just the politicians, yeah. though. I, just, I won't take much of yeah. that. Our people, too, yeah. have become part of the problem. I just I don't want it to be. You, it, you saw that in Oshun. Yes. <laughs> you are talking about it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and people will always get the leadership that they, they deserve. deserve. Yes, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to the thank morning you. show.